Right, uh, as Rachel said, I'm the MD of Northern Scotland, um, Volvo Truck and Bus. And really today, it's about our journey with BMT. Now, what I'd like to talk about in particular is our move from being unconscious practitioners to conscious practitioners. And I'll explain a wee bit later what I mean by that. But um, we're by no, no means experts, we're not even skilled, but we are practising. <laughs> we're practising. And we're practicing hard, so hopefully that will come out. Um, we've got 400 employees across 12 locations, so it's quite, quite geographically spread, and it's a bit of a challenge for our guys. But um, we we're a mature business. We compete in a fiercely competitive marketplace. You know, it's pretty tough out there. And um, we sell trucks, we sell parts, we, we sell labour hours, service, and other soft offers such as finance, repair and maintenance, and also, um, you know, driver training and such like. Um, we choose to compete on service rather than price. And that's a challenge because we think about um, you know, the, the recent economic challenges that we faced and our customers faced, uh, faced to come up with service solutions to work with the customers rather than just compete in price. That is really tough. That's tough. So when we look at our customers, they're in the transport industry, and generally speaking, the majority of them face a lot of issues, and number one issue is fuel costs. About 40% of the cost of running a vehicle is fuel. Drivers are about 40% as well. Drivers are absolutely key to fuel performance. They make the big difference. So what we were going to focus on was the drivers, but we also had, in our opinion, really fuel-efficient trucks, the best in the business. The problem we had was we weren't getting the best out of the trucks. So we're going to focus on the drivers and, more importantly, driver behaviours. I've mentioned the word behaviour there, that um, you know, we were oblivious to, 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 to BMT, not a clue what it was all about. But there again, unconsciously, we're thinking about driver behaviours. So for us, what we had to think about is how do we work with the customer to modify these behaviours of the drivers? We knew they, that was central to our success. That was key. So how do we get the customers on board? Now, we all know that you know, having the right data is important. If you don't have the data, you're going to struggle. So we've actually got telematics fitted to every truck, and it's called Dynafleet. And that then gives you pinpointed behaviour. Well, we can pinpoint the behaviours where the driver's going wrong. So whereas MPG is a lagging measure, if you like, but that's the, that's the real jewel in the crown, if you like, if, if you can get it right, it was the leading measures we had to find out. What does a driver do that contributes to that? Every driver in the industry thinks they're the best. They've <laughs> been driving for 30 years, and we're not there to, to sort of teach them how to drive or educate them how to drive. What we're there to do is just to modify their driving styles or their behaviours. So for us, we then say, well, it works. BMT works. We hadn't a clue about BMT. So unconsciously, we were then coaching these customers to improve and modify behaviours because we were getting away from antecedents, you know, that notices on board that they, if you don't achieve 10 MPG, you will be killed at dawn, you know, things like that. <laughs> so we were looking at this without knowing, but we know it's very successful and it has been very successful, and we're continuing to do that. That's part of our strategy in customer service, and that's what we mean by competing in customer service, that type of thing. We know it works, but the irony was that, uh, as John mentioned, we're a process-driven business. So when we actually look inwardly, we went back to 80% antecedents, not very many consequences. So for us, it was, it was, it was bizarre that you know, we were coaching customers on how to use BMT without knowing it and getting great success. Then when we looked inwardly at our business, we just used process to drive, or tried to use process to drive behaviour with extremely bad antecedents. And then in November 2011, we get a new HR manager in the business. And she was talking about BMT, and I'm thinking, well, the results driven. We need to get a result, you know. What's this about? And she slipped a book under my, my nose called Ideas for Wimps, and I read that, and we've now trained all our managers in BMT. So now that we've educated ourselves, I think we've moved from being unconscious to conscious practitioners of BMT. We're not there yet by any means. We're, we're, we're on a journey, as we say, but um, we've had some su good success over the last 12 months. This slide here, it's Productive Recovery Level 3. It's our MPG. It's a lagging measure. It flips up and down because what happens, that's each month since we started last year. 
we might train the technicians in a particular month so they're not, we're not going to sell the hours. So it dips down. But the line, the grey line there that goes up, that, that's the linear line that's shown that uh, we're making improvements. I can't say it's all down to BMT because we're still looking at lagging measures. We haven't really got smart yet on what are all the leading measures and what levers and buttons do we push to, to make it right. But I'm convinced that's contributed to that. Now, one percentage point improvement on that annually for a year puts another £100,000 in my bottom line. Currently, year to year, year on year, after four months, two percentage points up year on year without doing anything, without selling another truck, anything else, you know, just managing the business better. And all our dealer managers, one of them sitting here today, have been involved in this training, and, and it's about the local environment. How they, we're not being prescriptive at the centre, we're letting these guys look at the local environment, how do they shape that environment to get the right behaviours, to get the result. So for me, it's still lagging. Um, so what's, what's the next step for us? So what we're working on now is we're looking at uh, a behavioural balance scorecard. This is what we're working on to help us focus on the, the leading measures rather than the lagging measures. Hope that makes sense. Because we know that <clears throat> the right leadership and people doing the right things, then the customers and ourselves will be successful. And we can see that. Working with our customers, with BMT, unwittingly, we've helped them improve their bottom line. We've looked at what we've done in the last 12 months. I still believe we've got a long way to go. And we are, we are improving the bottom line. This is different for us. We're a results-driven business. Everybody wants to see financial KPIs. If I go somewhere and speak like this, they'll think I've, you know, lost the plot. <laughs> However, if I do that, I then show the, 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 the lagging measures, which they are, then I'm a hero. So, <laughs> how is going to help me be a hero? <laughs> but um, for, for me, I, I look at this and I've listened to what John was saying earlier, that 70% uh, of initiatives fail, and I've been there. We've tried it, it's failed, and then you just forget it, you move on to the next one and fail again, you know. That's the way we've done things. But I think we're, we're getting smarter now, we're being educated that we, we've got a good idea. This is my favourite slide, stole it for Rachel and, and Howard. This is um, my favourite slide ever, I think, actually, because whatever happens, I just think about that. I can apply that to anything. Whatever it's global, local, whatever it might be, behaviour drives process, which drives a plan. Um, about reducing complexity, John. Use that, you reduce complexity. Simple. What you say and do will drive the global strategy. Really? That's it. That's how easy <laughs> it is. So, on this, Howard's asked me a number of times, and I've heard Rachel say, how much time do you spend in strategic mode and how much time do you spend in operational mode? When we first met Howard, his first session, he said to me, it's behavioural science, BMT. It's, uh, it's cultural change and it takes time. So I then put another element, rather than strategic mode, operational mode, how much time do I spend in cultural mode? Because that's really what it's all about. And really, that, that's where I'm just now. Where should I spend my time? And I see it being behaviour or cultural mode. Because as P Peter Drucker famously said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>